Hey guys, welcome back to Platinum Off-Road. I want to talk to you in this video about a recent JL build that we finished here at the shop. And we're going to talk about specific products that we put into this build that you might be interested in knowing a few pros and cons about. And so let's go ahead and we're going to take the time to focus on each individual component to this build. And we're going to again talk about the time that we spent to install it. Uh, perhaps you're trying to do this yourself at your home garage. Uh, we'll get to talk to you a little bit about some of the pros and cons of the install as well as the performance of the components itself. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll take a look at the front bumper. Looking in on our front bumper, we've gone with the Addictive Desert design uh, Stealth Series bumpers. This is a front and rear that we went with this Jeep. Uh, so this bumper is actually it's a stubby bumper, so you'll have a nice high clearance uh, end over here on both sides. You'll have uh, your wheel well will be open, so that way approaching any obstacles and such, you won't hang up on that bumper. Now this bumper does come with a few options. You can get this bumper just the base stubby itself without any tubing uh, and without the winch mount, or you can get it with the tubing and then finally you're tubing with the winch mount. And that winch mount is not anything separate, it's actually just additional holes that have been drilled in the top of the bumper housing itself to mount a variety of different winch applications. So if you're choosing to go with the winch and you know that's where you're going to go ultimately, go ahead and choose that option as you go through with it. Now this bumper also is made for a, a number of LED applications here. You can see there's been a cutout. Now this bumper does have a slight curve to it um, as it has a couple folds and breaks in that front plate, which is perfect for the Radiant series uh, from Rigid. Now this light bar has a, is it, it is a curved light bar and it has backlight accent in which you can choose a variety of colors as you order that light so that way it accents to your Jeep. If you have any uh, you know, Rubicon stickers with outline that you would want to match up to, uh, which is exactly what we did in this build, this would be a perfect option for you. Now again, you don't have to go with the Radiant series. You can put a number of cubes in there. When you look up behind this, you can see there is a number of holes um, and, and options that you can go with to mounting uh, your own design and series of light bars um, or lighting application as you put this together. Now speaking of putting this together, now one thing that we had an issue with is you want to know right now that if you're going to put lighting and a winch onto this bumper, it's wise to go ahead and put your winch on first so you can access the lower bolt holes and getting that winch mounted safely and securely. And then you want to go ahead and pre-set up your light bar. That way you can just slide it into place and drop in the mounting holes uh, after you've put the winch on. That way you can reach in there. You do have access at this point to reach in there and tighten up and put a nice set of torque on all your bolts, whether it be the lights um, or it be the winch itself. Um, like I said, you want to put this on before putting it on the Jeep to make your life a little easier. Not that it was a problem, but you know we looked forward in on this and we knew that that would be a wise thing to do and uh, we were certainly glad that we did it. Now if you look, you can fit a set of three quarter D-ring shackles through here. Um, these are your standard shackles. Now one issue that we had is the fact that when we put these up, initially the three quarter, these are a textured a powder coat uh, lined and this main pin would not fit through the hole. Now we did measure it, we mic'd it and we did find out that it was well just a hair over three quarter inch drill out um, which isn't really an issue with with addictive desert design. However you know if you're going to go in with a powder coat uh, pin do know that you're going to have to bore this out just a little bit so that way you can slide your pins in and out pretty easily. So be aware of that if that's the one thing that you're going to look at putting into your build. Another feature that we added to this is we ended up with the Factor 55 flat link. And this is to help with recovery uh, for the client. Uh, we've used these on our own personal rigs and many of our clients that we've set these up with have absolutely loved them. Very simple application. All you'll need to do is once it's out, you just put yourself a D-ring shackle through here. A three-quarter pin will fit this one and uh, that way you can hit, hook up your rigging and your recovery uh, gear however you'd like. Um, it's extremely um, safe over what the traditional hooks that come with these winches and such. Uh, it's got a much higher tensile strength rating so that way 
uh, your recovery uh, situations be a lot safer off that way. For the winch, we did select a 12,000 pound Smitty Belt XRC. This is a simple setup. We, do, we went with the synthetic line because it's much lighter. If you look in on the specs between a steel cable winch and a synthetic line winch, you will see that there is a significant difference between the weights of the two. So in order to you know, prevent any front end sagging down, uh, we went ahead and went with the synthetic line winch. So that way as we do our build, we know we're going to deliver to the client a, a pretty level build without having to worry about sagging in the front. So that's another idea to think about when you're putting your list together. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Uh, the bumper went on pretty well. All the holes lined up very well and uh, no issues with that. I will say that the hardware coming in from the back to, through this bumper ended up being just a little short. So uh, if you notice, there is some extra support plates from the factory bumper uh, on each side of the frame rail. Uh, we had to remove those in order to safely get enough threads into the mounting, the backing uh, threads of the bumper so that way it would be a safe install and the vehicle can leave and we know that we don't have any issues coming in down the road. So just think about that as you're putting your bumper on as well. So let's move on to the next thing. We're going to focus in on the rear bumper and uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we found with that and uh, we'll go ahead and head to the back. Okay guys, so we're back here at the rear bumper. Again, like we said, we went ahead and we stuck with the Addictive Desert Design Stealth Series. Again, this does, as you can see on the outside of the frame rails, offer for a higher clearance and that will help with those approach angles, departure angles and such when you're out on the off-road trails. One thing that we would like to note is that just as the front bumper uh, was very complimentary with the Radiant Series uh, rigid light bar, the rear bumper is as well. So that way if you get yourself the set of the rigid cubes to put in here in the slots, uh, it'll actually match the front bumper. Now what we did is just as in the front bumper, we selected the red backlight to accent uh, the Rubicon at decals and such. We also did that with the rear. That way when we turn on the parking circuit, we work the wiring in such a way that the backlights come on. It's a very nice touch and feature that we feel is uh, pretty neat. It's very nice now that he's got four red lights back here. Uh, so that way these backlights go into something functional versus just something decorative he can use in a parking lot. So uh, let's look in some other features. The rear backup sensors. Now this was an issue. So we had it first. The sensors that were on these were in the exact uh, spot, location, and position of the factory sensors. We moved them over one sensor at a time. We're very meticulous in doing so with any of our builds and work and so we did not want to mess this up. These are very expensive sensors and yes, there are many other shops that we have been told by the dealerships that we serve that are being broken as these other shops were moving sensors over. So we made sure that we didn't modify or do anything against what Addictive Desert Designs put into their bumper. Now, they do give you an alignment tab that replicates the factory steel bumpers. So as you move these over and put them exactly as the alignment tabs have you, what you end up is the outside sensors are fairly good. Uh, this, the driver's side we noticed was having some impairment. However, the two center sensors were completely obstructed by the spare tire. Especially if you go in with an aftermarket wheel and tire combo, it will set further off of your tire carrier and actually begin to obstruct that sensor position. And so what we did is we created another video for you guys. If this is a bumper you're selecting or if it's an issue that you're having, please check out our other video where we go in detail about what we did to take the bumper off, reset all the uh, sensor positions, and then we showed you back on the dash that actually they perform better than they did factory. So please check that video out as well. So back to the bumper. Overall, it fit very well. It fit, slid right onto the frame rails. All the holes lined up pretty well. Um, there was a little bit of an issue with some of perhaps while the bumper was being welded, uh, heat will actually shrink the metal, compressing the metal molecules. And so the bumper had a little bit of rotational torsion to it. And uh, we had to do a little bit of force effort to get the final bolts to line up just perfectly without t damaging any threads. So just be aware of that. But overall, once it's done and you work with a friend or an extra set of hands, you can get this on uh, with just near perfection. And overall, it's a beautiful bumper, great choice, very happy, especially since we figured out the sensors. Uh, we are very happy with the bumper. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the steps. 
uh, that we chose for this build and see if they're a good fit for you. Looking at our steps now, we went with an NFAB hoop step. Very simple application. It is a direct bolt-on fit. No holes to be drilled. You can even use your OE hardware if you've got it as you're pulling off rock rails or running boards from your factory setup. And um, it does come with the supplied hardware that you need. It is a very straightforward install. Uh, it may only take you at the most 15, 20 minutes per side to put these on. Uh, nothing is already a big deal at all. So don't worry about that if you're kind of concerned about a, an in-depth process to installing steps. This is a great choice to go with. These are very durable. These do have a three inch main tube and you know they are fully welded around the seams uh, so you don't have to worry about any water getting into this tube rusting out and causing issues down the road. It does feature a, a slotted plate here for your foot so that way you can actually have traction uh, as you do step in and out of the vehicle in the wet season. And speaking of stepping in, one test that you always want to run when you're looking at a pair of steps is you want to be able to step on these and see whether or not they move from the body or if it moves the entire Jeep with you. That's how you know you've got a good set of steps. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll see how these hold up. So we see there that it was a very simple test that these passed. So again, we've worked with this step many times. Uh, we've had other clients that have ran this step on their JKs and had loved them. Uh, been able to even take on a few trail rash as they've gone over rocks and obstacles as they go out and play with their Jeep. So if this is something you're looking into, it's definitely got our vote. As we look in on the tire and wheel choice, the client and I, we talked about a key factor he really wanted. He wanted a nice, comfortable drive, but yet can handle any season and weather of tire. So what we looked in at is the ProComp AT Sport. It is an all-season, all-terrain tire. Uh, it's built with a number of tread sites throughout the tread, which is good for water dissipation. And it's got a nice open lug type pattern, especially for an AT tire. Um, this helps to not only allow mud and whatever the terrain might be to enter into the tire, but also to self-clean as that tire slings uh, as you give it some acceleration in whatever terrain you might be in. And this tire, it is a 315-7017. It hangs out in the 35-inch tire class. Um, this is an E-load range, which is a little heavy for a Jeep, uh, you know, even a four-door Jeep. Uh, but that's okay because this tire is actually, it's a very soft sidewall tire. It's a very nice, smooth and nice tread that you can use on the highway. You won't hear much road noise with this tire. Uh, it, it, it contours to imperfections in the road and road bumps as you go over them. So this tire is a great choice if you're looking for a tire to use on a daily driver that allows for comfort, longevity, as well as on and off-road use. Now I mentioned longevity. This is a 60,000 tread wear tire uh, from the manufacturer ProComp. Now I've ran these on a number of builds that we've done for clients. I'm personally running them on my own vehicle as my daily driver and I'll say this, this has been an amazing tire for me as well as all my clients. Not a single client has ever left this shop without letting me know how much they love this tire. So if this tire has been on your list that you've been debating between, uh, definitely give it some consideration. Uh, I would definitely say that you would be happy with that choice. As we look in on the wheel, we went with the Fuel Beast. And this wheel is actually, it's a unique dimension because it's a 17 by nine dimension. However, it offers a negative 12 millimeter offset, which means from, this back, from the back of the mounting point, this center of the wheel sets negative 12 millimeters out to the outside of where that all mounts. Now that's the center line here, so what that means is that you're going to have a little bit more uh, push out or a little bit deeper surface to this wheel uh, having that negative 12 millimeter. What does that mean in terms of uh, a negative 12 or a negative 6 um, or even a zero millimeter offset? When you're comparing those wheels, you're going to see that this negative 12 millimeter is a little bit deeper uh, you know, deeper face. Uh, even if you don't go with this wheel but choose another with the negative 12, you'll see it's got a little bit deeper lip to it. So as you go more into the negatives, the deeper that wheel becomes. So what, like I said, this is unique because it's not often you find a 17 by 9 uh, offering a negative 12 millimeter offset. So therefore you get a pretty good stance with this wheel 
uh, without trying to you know debate whether or not to go with the wheel spacer down the road to get you a little bit better stance. So if this wheel is something you're considering uh, and you're looking at something that's giving you a little bit more stance, this is definitely a great option to go with. Taking a look at our suspension now, we went with a very simple and practical suspension choice. It's made by Rubicon Express. It's their two and a half linear coil system. It's a very basic system and setup. Um, install was pretty uh, straightforward and uh, one thing that we'd like to note is that it features um, new coils all around. It'll provide you new sway bar links all around and it will also provide you front lower control arms that are a little bit longer over your factory lower control arms and that allows you to get to a pretty decent caster setting which you want to go with after you've lifted any Jeep or straight axle assembly. Um, so with these new lower control arms that come in this kit uh, you will be able to go ahead and rid that issue and know that you've gotten yourself up to a pretty decent caster setting right off the bat. Now those, ca those control arms are made out of 4130 chromoly alloy. It's a great material to DOM 120 wall and it's been a ma great material that we've been able to use in fabrication processes. Uh, very durable, strong and never given us any issues there. So I think with that control arm uh, you'd be pretty set. Now it is a fixed control arm. It doesn't offer for any adjustability. It's got a double end bushing on it. Um, that way you don't have to worry about any of the Heim joints or Johnny joints that require a lot of maintenance over time. Uh, other manufacturers focus on those control arm ends. Um, here, you know, if we're building a daily driver um, that'll go out and wheel occasionally or even just on weekends and such, I'm telling you, you really want to look in on getting a double bushing control arm uh, versus something with the flex joint or a Heim joint, Johnny joint, whatever your manufacturer might call it. Again, those do take a lot of constant and routine maintenance uh, to prevent premature failure from those joints. And as those joints do cause uh, alignment issues over time, uh, that's simply because those joints wear out and start to allow movement uh, at that mounting point, whether it be frame side or axle side. So going with the solid joint upper and lower on that control arm is always a great choice if you're looking for longevity and something that doesn't require a lot of maintenance. Now one thing that we didn't like about the Rubicon Express kit is of course the sway links. Uh, this is a Rubicon model so we do have a simple disconnect sway bar uh, that's within the, the factory option. Um, however, uh, that didn't pose too much of an issue for this being that this is a fixed sway bar link. This is not a quick disconnect. If you do not have that disconnect option uh, on the Rubicon models and such, um, make sure that you want to look into maybe swapping these out for a quick disconnect option that's out there on the market. Um, however, for this application, the client was looking for something to be a very simple daily driver, uh, get them a little bit of elevation, uh, still give a nice ride quality similar to factory, and uh, that's why we selected this kit. Um, some other features of it is the fact that uh, it does offer bump stop extensions, and as well as on the lower control arms, it allows for your brake line to be reattached, just like your factory control arm. But like I said, overall, this kit made by Rubicon Express, um, it's a great choice to go with. It's uh, easy on the pocket, and uh, it's a pretty straightforward install, no hiccups or issues there. And um, for performance, I can say that this vehicle's had roughly about 500 miles on it since it's left our shop and returned for a retorque check. And uh, you know, this thing still drives uh, it's pretty much very close to the day it left the dealership lot. So it's a great choice of suspension if you're looking for comfort and performance. When we talk about performance, Rough Country and other brands out there, um, they will allow for coils to warp, um, you know, some of your lower grade coils. Um, I know that Ru Rubicon Express has actually been at a great, pr a great price point. However, um, we've never had issues with coils that have warped and lost shape or their rating over time. So if that's something that you're worried about, not spending you know thousands of dollars on a kit, uh, you don't need to worry about that. Rubicon Express is a US product, a uh, great team of engineers. We work with them in a lot of builds and we've never had any comebacks or failures. Speaking of failures, if you ever do have an issue with this product, a Rubicon Express product, they do offer a manufacturer lifetime warranty, no questions asked. So even if you do have an issue or go out and play a little too hard, uh, guess what? No questions asked. Just give them a call and uh, line up the arrangement for the product to be shipped and you're set to go. For our over the windshield lighting system, we chose a set of rigid driving lights 
that are mounted to a rough country 50 inch adapter bracket sitting between the hammerhead off-road pillar mounts. Now the overhead system overall was a great fit. Everything went very well and smooth. Um, one thing we did notice is that we had um, to put a spacer between the actual adapter bracket and the pillar mounts. The reason why is because we had an excessive gap as we did the total install. As we put this bracket in, we had an excessive gap that actually we had to pull these together from each side, which then pulled the pillar mounts into the actual windshield frame housing. Uh, of course, every single road bump that we would, that we would hit, uh, those pillar brackets would kind of vibrate and cause a little bit of tapping on the windshield frame. So we went ahead, brought the Jeep back, and we threw a set of spacers in, and now we can actually fit our fingers back through here, and we can do that on both sides, and it's a nice fit, everything's still tight, and uh, certainly holding up strong. Now for the driving lights themselves, again we said we went with the rigid driving lights. Uh, these aren't the brightest out there. Um, they do offer them in different lens options. We went with this because they were simple, they were nice size, nothing too large. Again, we went with the individual lights so you didn't want to go with something that was too bulky for uh, what would be sitting up above that windshield level. The bigger the light you put up there, the more wind turbulence you're going to hear uh, whether or not you have a soft top or a hard top. If you've got the soft top, you might uh, really consider keeping this lighting system as small as possible for sure because of the turbulence that will come as this wind channels around off this light bar is going to constantly be hitting on the top of uh, just above the driver and the passenger head. Uh, now with the hard top, you don't hear it near as much. Uh, there are times that if you're driving against the wind, you'll hear it kind of uh, a slight, you know, um, whistling or a roaring noise that might occur along some of the frame joints. Um, don't be alarmed of that, that is very normal, but just be aware that maybe during a head front um, you will hear some of that with an over the windshield lighting system. Again, the overall fitment was great. Uh, you do see a little bit of a gap here from the hammerhead system. It's got a nice, unique, aggressive off-road look. It's not fitting flush, similar to how a lot of the JK mounts were. I think this is a great idea because someday you might decide you don't want the overhead lighting system and you can remove it and know that you didn't cause any damage to the paint on the cowl. Now, none of this requires drilling into the cowl itself or the windshield frame. You have the ability to run the wiring between the bracket and the pillar of the windshield itself and uh, that way you don't have to drill any holes. Uh, once you access down below the main cowl joint, you'll then head towards the battery and there's a foam cover in which you can just slide right underneath and uh, it's a real easy uh, install. Uh, the lighting was very direct. This Jeep came with the factory auxiliary switches in which we were able to tie into those auxiliary switches hanging out between uh, the passenger fender and the battery itself. So if you don't have those switches, another upgrade you might look at is browse the internet and you'll be able to find those switches on a number of online sites. Uh, I'd like to put that link down in the description for this pay, or for the video itself. Um, so check that out, scroll down and get some of those links to take you directly where to find those switches uh, for your future build. Okay friends, we want to thank you so much for joining us on this video. We hope that it was of uh, great value to you guys, looking in on some of the components and parts that we were working with and uh, making sure that whether you're not you like the way they look on the vehicle. Uh, also, if it's something that you'd like to tackle for yourself in the garage, uh, this uh, video hopefully showed you some pros and cons to whether the installation or performance of the parts and uh, some things to think about, maybe some upgrades aside from what we did here that you'd like to do to your vehicle. Again, we've had this Jeep for a few days extra now so that way we can take it out, test it, put some miles on it. We've taken it on our obstacle course out back behind the shop and uh, again, everything has worked very well. Uh, we were able to fix the rear bumper sensor issue and uh, get the rear sensors working what I feel better than factory. And uh, so we hope that you can check that video out as well if you're having that issue. So uh, we do want to thank all the manufacturers that we were able to work with on this. And uh, we definitely want to thank our client for giving us the time to work on the vehicle and uh, be able to take the time to produce videos to show you guys uh, a little bit about each component, uh, the install process, and making sure that you guys found some benefit to uh, what we were able to do for you. So if you please just give us a subscribe, make sure you like the video down below, and if there's anything you need, please get, leave it down in the comments and we'll get back to you. And again, thank you for checking in with us.